There's a new report out from ProPublica that is calling out the Idaho GOP for refusing to support women and children after passing a deeply draconian abortion ban. To which, of course, is, to me is, is no surprise. Uh, now, after the SCOTUS uh, struck down Roe v. Wade, state's governor, uh, Brad Little, said that they should turn to helping women who might otherwise have terminated their pregnancies. Now, of course, that would make sense, considering how they claim to care about, you know, life. <laughs> I, uh, they call themselves pro-life, okay? Uh, you would think that they would try to expand programs to help new mothers, infants, etc., be able to survive. Little said this, we absolutely must come together like never before to support women and teens facing unexpected or unwanted pregnancies. Families, charities, churches, and local and state government must stand ready to lift them up and help them and their families with access to adoption services, health care, financial and food assistance, counseling and treatment, and family planning. Well, I mean, all of that seems to be right there. I mean, very obvious. If you're, look, you're still taking away their choice, and I'm deeply opposed to that. But I guess if you're going to do that, the least you could do is not subject them to the abject poverty that you were forcing them into by forcing them to have a baby that they don't want. Just saying. But no, they, they didn't even do that. It, you heard everything that he pointed out. What did Idaho do? Nothing. Look, at least with other conservative states that, again, have passed these pretty draconian, very unpopular anti-abortion bans, or I'm sorry, abortion bans, um, they at least took some steps to enhance their safety nets to help families during pregnancy and after birth. The least you could do, the least you could do, but not Idaho. Idaho was straight up, I ah, have them kids. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, the report noted that legislators di uh, disbanded a state committee that investigated the root causes of maternal deaths, making it the only state in the country with no such mortality review. So think about this. Women dying in childbirth, and there's no body out there in Idaho that is actually investigating this. You know, the reasons why, what they could have done to prevent such things. Again, these are... It, 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 the year of our Lord, 2023, okay? And there are women dying in childbirth in this country, the wealthiest country in the world. And Idaho is like, we don't even want to look into it. Don't care. Don't care. What, 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 pro-life? <laughs> what do you mean pro-life? We're not pro-life. <laughs> look, they allowed also two bills to die that would have put Idaho on the same track as nearly every other state with abortion restrictions, including Florida, Kentucky, and Texas. So Idaho is worse than Florida, Kentucky, and Texas. Wow. So what did they do? They extended postpartum Medicaid coverage to a year. Idaho's Medicaid coverage ends two months after birth, which is the minimum under federal law. You know what they say about the minimum, right? If they're giving you the minimum, it means that if they could, if they were allowed to, they would give you less. Or nothing at all. You get nothing. Wow. And uh, they can't blame it on not having funding either because turns out Idaho turned down millions of dollars in federal, uh, federal money. Uh, one of the examples here is $36 million in federal grants that were going to be used to support child care. Turned it out. No, we don't want your stinking money for checks notes. Child care? Hmm, really? Uh, now, this is even while other states with new abortion restrictions, Alabama, Louisiana, and Missouri. 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 The state that sounds like misery is actually doing it better when it comes to child care than Idaho. They made investments in early childhood education and in daycare. Idaho said, nope. So now one representative uh, in uh, Idaho, this is uh, Brent Crane, a longtime Republican leader who chairs the House State Affairs Committee. He said GOP lawmakers last year had hoped to put forward bills to improve 
healthcare and support for kids and families. But said, ah, you know, we just didn't get to it. Why is that? Uh, well, they said they got bogged down in debates over exceptions to the abortion ban. Ah. Crane said, quote, Idaho has some work to do. Be patient with us. No. How about no? You get no patience. And, and here's why. Okay, number one, you spent years, decades even, trying to strip away women's reproductive freedom. Okay? To bring about the end of abortion, you say. Okay? Uh, so in all of that time, you didn't you didn't actually have a plan to to figure out what to do with the influx of unwanted, unexpected children and the financial strain that that's going to cause on your constituents and on the people that are going to be affected by this? You didn't think about that? You didn't think about it at all? <laughs> no, but it's actually worse. Because, look, it, you could say, well, maybe they were stupid and didn't create a plan. Well, it would be nice, right? <laughs> I mean, of all the uh, uh, ex explanations, at least that would be somewhat understandable them being complete and utter morons you idiot but no no for many this is the preferred outcome the suffering and poverty that it will bring not only to the families but the children is desired that's what they want why why would you want that because in their mind it will bring them back to the church yes Blaine Kanzadi, uh, in basically what is his, uh, you know, let me find it. Oh my God, he admitted it. That moment, um, Blaine Kanzadi, president of the Idaho Family Policy Center, who is an anti-abortion lobbyist, admitted that, you know what, uh, all the stuff that, uh, you know, uh, the Idaho Republicans said that they were going to do to help mothers, that ah, shouldn't actually be government at all. No, no, no. It should be the church. Quote, the Bible is clear and the history of Christendom broadly is clear. That is the church's responsibility to meet the needs of the poor and to ensure that people have the services that they need to live flourishing lives. So, and of course, you want to make that only available if you are a member of the church so that you rely on the church and that you become, a, you know, indoctrinated into their specific belief systems. Yes, that's it. Look, I think we're all aware that desperation can be a pretty good motivator to uh, drive people into the church. OK. I'm just saying it, it's a good motivator for conversion and conversion, of course, can lead to control. And that's ultimately what they want, conversion and control. Uh, to control women, to control their bodies, their reproductive systems. Uh, and one way to do that, of course, is to prevent women who, you know, get pregnant from being able to choose whether or not they will bring that baby to term. So you create, you know, that situation where women, again, in, in this, and you know, it, has to do uh, sometimes with rape or sexual assault and things like that, or just, you know, uh, issues where, you know, a woman gets pregnant and it's like, oh my God, I don't want to have that shot, right? Uh, well, doesn't matter. In Idaho, they said you're going to have it anyway. And it, since you're pregnant, we're not going to help you. We're just not going to help you at all, <laughs> okay? Uh, you know who's going to help you? The church. Go to Jesus. Go to God. Because that's, again, ultimately their goal. Drive them into indoctrination, into religion for material help so that they control their lives. Now, there's more. Fred Birnbaum, Legislative Affairs Director of Idaho Freedom Foundation, he had testified going back to um, studying the causes of Idaho's roughly 10 to 15 preventable maternal deaths each year saying this, uh, he had testified against that because he didn't want government intrusion. Quote, you know the old saying, all roads lead to Rome. Well, all government created committees lead to the call for more government spending. 
So hold on here. Even if government spending can literally save lives 10 to 15 a year, these people are against it because why? Oh, because we don't want to spend money on them. <laughs> these women, I mean, they're not worth it. They're not worth more government spending. <laughs> they're alive. <laughs> don't care. Wait, I thought you guys were supposed to be pro-life. Aren't you? Aren't you pro-life? Weird. Weird you keep saying that, and apparently you don't mean it at all. Look, that's what some of these zealots believe, okay? Look, I keep saying, I'll keep saying it. If you do, if your purpose is to promote more families, okay, then why don't you just make this country a, a place where people want to have families? Currently, it's not. Now, how do you do that? Uh, well, you ensure people have higher wages so that, you know, you can, if you choose to, be able to survive on a single income, if you choose to, right? Um, so that you can have, you know, uh, a one parent stay home uh, with the child. Or if you choose not to, and that's fine, have affordable child care. Yes, child care. How about affordable homes? How about health care? You know, for everybody. Wouldn't that be great? Family planning, better schools, safer streets, more job and educational opportunities for those families. Gee, wouldn't that be fantastic? And yes, a strong safety net, a welfare state. You know, that ensures the welfare of the people. But instead what we get are you know, members of the far right that strip away freedom, even if it means your death. And that's it. If you're a woman or a trans man or a non-binary person, even with a uterus, if, uh, you know, it, hey, if you get pregnant, somehow, it doesn't matter how, <laughs> doesn't matter, uh, we're not going to investigate your death if you die during childbirth. That's it. We're, we're just not, we don't care. We don't care at all. It doesn't matter to them. If, you're a if you have a womb, you are to be controlled and ultimately to be bred. That it believe they believe that that is your only purpose in life. It's just to be bred, a broodmare. So it's no surprise to me that in Idaho, that is under, under the rule of the far right, even more right wing than Texas and Missouri, that they are making this place the least free, at least for women, and the most hostile place to ever have a family. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're in Idaho, I, I mean, it, look, if I, if I was a woman and I was in, anywhere near Idaho, I would want men to stay at least 20 feet away from me, <laughs> okay, at all times, at all times. No way am I getting pregnant in that state. Hell no. There's no way am I even going to live in that state if I was a woman, right? Um, because it is just such a hostile, controlling place. If, if, you're, a, if you're a woman, it, no. Terrible, terrible, terrible place. Uh, filled with absolutely terrible people uh, who just consistently lie and, and just don't care. They don't care about anything except their own power.